All right, everybody. This is Ross the Fig Boss. We're looking at a really special fig variety today. It's called Calderona, and it's definitely one of the tastier fig varieties that uh, has been, you know, really well spread throughout the fig community. It's a Pons variety, so Montserrat Pons in Spain is growing this and has written about it, and you can find a lot of information on this particular fig on his website. Um, I highly recommend that you guys check it out or get his book, Fig Trees of the Balearic Islands, and you can read all about it. In fact, we're going to review this fig today, but really any of the information of the characteristics of the tree that you want to know is going to be in that book, and it's going to be very accurate. More accurate than what I have to tell you guys in this video. I'll show you guys my tree. We're going to taste these, this fruit here and talk about the flavor. Um, but for the most part, if you want to know about you know, some of the characteristics, that's a great place to look. I highly recommend it. We are been covering this year, we have been covering a lot of different fig varieties. And I think the reason for that this year is that there's so many varieties that are well worth covering that I've, I've ripened this year. There's really, um, this one is very special. It has a really good reputation. So I figure, you know, obviously we should cover it. We should talk about it. If it has a lot of history, if it's something that's like a standard, you know, I've tried not to make uh, fig review, uh, variety fig reviews of, you know, varieties we've already covered. Um, I've done that with Sucret, but, you know, that's a variety I've been trying to really promote and get people, you know, to be aware that it is such a special variety. So this one will kind of just hopefully put our stamp of approval on it. I opened it up and really have been quite amazed. Uh, it's a really beautiful fig. It looks very tasty. A lot of people kind of think of it as like um, Black Madeira in a sense. I think it's called Calderona because it shapes like a cauldron. I believe that's the translation if I'm not mistaken. And you can, again, find that information out in Pons' book. Um, I would say the fig though is more round typically than a Black Madeira. It doesn't necessarily have that Urciolato shape that I, I think of. The stem length is a really good way to identify this um, in that it kind of looks like a Black Madeira, but it has a slightly longer stem, whereas Black Madeira typically tends to have a very short stem. And, uh, you know, the fig typically, for that reason, when they ripen, and I, I wish I had a photo or showed you guys the video, but I, I kind of messed up the first video I did but the fig was hanging right here on the tree and it was pretty much hanging kind of downwards. It wasn't hanging straight up in the air with its eye pointed upwards. And that's typically what you'll see on Black Madeira. And that's typically why it's such a problem variety. Like this, this fig up here is an example of how the figs, although they're not ripe yet, but their, their eyes are pointed up towards the sky. And if it rains at all, the rain hits that eye and because the eye is such a sensitive location of the fig, it tends to split at that spot. And Black Madeira and Italian 258, because of that short stem, that shorter neck that they, it tends to have, it just typically splits quite often. And I don't know, you know, really how often Calderona is gonna split here, but I can pretty much guarantee you that it's going to split less than Black Madeira and Italian 258 based on just the way I have saw it hang on the tree. The longer stem, the fact that the neck seems to be a bit pliable, whereas Black Madeira is a bit more tough around the neck uh, and the skin is just very tough on Black Madeira. You know, that's another reason why I really like Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross. I definitely want to review that, for, that fig for you guys at some point this season. I know it's going to be a good one and I think it's going to be in the running, at least with Calderona, for something that is, you know, um, probably a better option here in terms of its split resistance, its rain resistance, along with this Calderona. What's even more interesting is that you'll find in Pons' book or his website a different variety called Calderona de Minor. And I also grow that one as well. I have that one planted in the ground as well as Calderona planted in the ground. And both of them didn't fruit this year because uh, they were still a bit young and they're getting themselves established. But also that planting I have is just the jungle. And 
it's such a high dense planting that if you don't have the right light that gets to these varieties, you won't necessarily see the fruits. And I find that both, at least with Calderona and Calderona de Minor, they may not really do that well in that high dense system. They may, do, they may need a little bit more light or at least an average amount of light to set those fruit buds. And if they're just not getting that, you won't get the fruit. So, you know, it's not like a variety like Neruccello de Elba or Celeste or LSU Huye or, you know, even uh, Borges Soak Grease that they set their fruit buds very easily without a ton of help uh, from getting a lot of light. They don't necessarily need as much light. And therefore, you could make an argument that Calderona and Calderona de Minor probably won't be that um, productive in a lower light environment, a lower light climate or location, I should say. Um, and just in general, I would say might be a little lower on the production. But if you're weighing the harvest, I would say this is probably a very high productive fig um, because the figs definitely have a nice size kind of like black Madeira and if you can get this the fruits to set you have the right amount of sunlight with the help of the the nice size of the fruits this is definitely a medium to large size fruit um, you actually will have a, a nice overall weight to your harvest so I think this fig's got a lot going for it and called the run of the minor I want to mention because we kind of got a little off track is that that particular fruit or that particular variety is very similar to Calderona, but just like the hardy Chicago types, that there's so many different ones and just like the different types of Celeste, there's so many different types of Celeste or different sources. And over time, they slowly adapt to different conditions and they look, you know, very similar at first glance. They have very similar characteristics to each other. But if you really study them and you really grow them for a long time, you realize that they're actually different. And that's kind of what Calderona de Minor is, is that it's a variety that's very similar to Calderona, but for many reasons, actually, if you look at Ponza's book and you read it, you'll see that it should be a better variety, actually, with splitting and rain resistance. So for me, I think Calderona's got a nice place here. I hope it does well here in terms of rain, but my money actually is gonna be on the, the de Minor. So, uh, I'm putting more of my stock and my effort and my attention towards that particular variety. And they should taste very similar as well. So, um, you know, there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference other than really just the performance. But, but we're going to find out. You know, I don't want to make any judgments just yet. So again, here's the fruit. It's just a stunner. It really looks very syrupy. The inside looks a lot like Black Madeira. I bet you it's very sweet. The acnes are many, there's many acnes and there's, um, they're definitely long. So I imagine the, the texture is quite meaty and also very syrupy, berry flavor. I'm sure it has that nice berry punch that Black Madeira frequently has. And the, the interior looks like it has a lot of seeds. So there's probably a nice crunch to it. And it's also got a nice pigmentation. It's kind of turning dark red, to almost purple. So for my money, this is a very special fruit in terms of flavor, and that's why we're, we're reviewing it, mainly for that. Uh, let's try it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it does have that Black Madeira-ish berry flavor, but it more so reminds me of a Adriatic. Good crunch to it. The skin isn't that bad, you know. Uh, Black Madeira, a lot of people complain that the skin's very thick, and I would agree. It's very good. I think I actually, this one has a nice raspberry flavor. It does remind me of something in between a Black Madeira and an Adriatic, like green Aishia type fig. So this is very good. Um, yeah, I have to say that um, a lot of people will love this. I think if it definitely performs better than Black Madeira, then it's, it's a keeper. And I hope it doesn't split nearly as often. And we're going to kind of evaluate it over the next couple of years, as well as the, the minor. And uh, yeah, we'll have a lot of information, I think, over the next coming years about these particular figs. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys will grow it because it's certainly a good one.
We'll see you soon, all right? Take care. We'll catch you for guys for the next video.